what's going on guys. I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and when you think of Samsung and think of Motorola, what do you think of? Well for me personally, I think of Android phones. The Motorola Atrix 4G announced a few weeks ago, available on AT&T now, the Samsung Galaxy S 4G shown off at Mobile World Congress, available now as well on T-Mobile. Both of these are pretty equipped devices. One gigahertz dual core uh, NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, five megapixel camera, four inch display, and a biometric fingerprint reader to boot. That dual core processor definitely pretty powerful over here. On this hand, Samsung Galaxy S 4G available on T-Mobile, one gigahertz Hummingbird processor, five megapixel camera, Android 2.2, a nice little powerhouse, four inch Super AMOLED display, a nice little powerhouse over here. Which one's the best? Well, you know what we do in the phone dog house when we're trying to figure that out. We do a dog fight. Motorola Atrix 4G, Samsung Galaxy S. We're going to figure it out. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They're hooking us up with two of these, two of these, one, two, three. That's four for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway. So when you go into Best Buy Mobile with either of these devices, you know, you want to buy one. No rebates, no paperwork, no waiting eight to ten weeks. Paperwork? No paperwork, waiting eight to ten weeks. You walk out the door right then getting the after rebate price. Enough of that, let's get into it. Dogfight, Motorola Atrix 4G, Samsung Galaxy S 4G. Which one's gonna win? We're gonna find out. Two Android smartphones, two high-end Android smartphones at that on two different carriers. On one hand, you have the Samsung Galaxy S 4G. Uh, pretty awesome Android device competing with the MyTouch 4G and uh, the G2 on T-Mobile. One gigahertz Hummingbird processor, four inch Super AMOLED display, 5 megapixel camera, uh, revised battery door. It's essentially, if you look at the design, it looks just like the original, uh, the Samsung Vibrant, which was a member of the original Galaxy S line of devices. But they've done some things. They've added a front-facing camera, a 5 megapixel camera uh, on the back, Android 2.2, and uh, a bigger battery as a way, you know, as a way of making it a little bit better. So it's more of an evolutionary upgrade to the Vibrant as opposed to an entirely new device, but still some uh, still some groundbreaking changes. It's available for $199.99 uh, at T-Mobile stores, and uh, I'm sure you can find it cheaper online uh, and through some third-party retailers, but $199 puts it right in that price point with the MyTouch 4G and the G2. Then you have the Motorola Atrix 4G, also $199.99 on AT&T, uh, 1 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual-core processor, 4-inch QHD display, so also high resolution, as you can, uh, you may be able to tell on the camera. 5 megapixel camera on the back as well, uh, front-facing camera, and then you can see very similar design here minus the hump. It has a big battery, 1,930 milliamps here, 1,650 in this one. So definitely an improvement on both ends, but uh, particularly in the Atrix from the typical 1,500 milliamp battery that comes on most Android devices, or that seems to be the norm on a lot of the high-end Android phones. That said, this processor is going to require more uh, more battery consumption than uh, the others on the market. It's dual core. It's going to suck down battery life, so that bigger battery is kind of a necessity. You know, in battery tests, I won't spoil it for you. I'll save this for the later part of the video, or the dogfight, rather. But, uh, and, you know, testing, to me, I find this one to be just ever so slightly better just because it's a single core processor. Anyway, let's get a look. Android 2.2 on both of these devices. This one's running Samsung's TouchWiz user interface. This one's running Moto Blur, uh, Motorola's Moto Blur. And this is running the full version of Moto Blur. There's no, you look at the Droid X and you look at the Droid 2, they're running Motorola's applications platform, which is kind of a toned down version of Moto Blur. This is the full swing version that you remember from the Devour. I mean, it's been revised, but from the Devour to the Bravo, to the uh, the flip side, to the flip out. I mean, it's that typical. Like, actually, I don't think the flip out. Yeah, it did. It did have Moto Blur. Um, you like this conversation I'm having with myself? Uh, you know, it's that what you remember with the little colorful buttons at the bottom and uh, kind of bubbly. Well, not really bubbly, but kind of you know the same icons, but just typical full on Moto Blur experience, which a lot of people don't like. It's very much a love hate manufacturer installed overlay. And then you have TouchWiz, which you can just tell by looking at this. They're going head to head against the iPhone with this design. And previously, you know, before the iPhone was available on Verizon, they had the Fascinate, Samsung Fascinate on Verizon. And for people that came to me and said, I want an iPhone, but you know, obviously the iPhone isn't on Verizon, what should I get? I would say, oftentimes I would say the Fascinate just because the menu structure is almost identical. I mean, they've really crafted this from the four icons down here to when you click applications. And instead of it being a typical Android layout where it scrolls up and down like this, 
it scrolls side to side just like iOS does. So, and then of course the bubbly, uh, the bubbly little boxes around the applications as well really show that. So that's a quick overview of the operating systems. Like I said, both Android 2.2, so there's no real edge there, but let's take a look at the widgets just to give you an idea. And let me go to a spare screen on both of these devices. Seven home screens on both, and you can see you can scroll through the ones on Moto Blur by doing that at the bottom, and then with these, you can't, there's, you know, you can click on individual and go back and forth that way, or you can scroll the traditional way. Let's get to an empty screen on both of these so we can take a look at some of the widgets. Now, you know, as much as I, I personally don't care for Moto Blur, but one thing I do have to give them credit for, the widgets on Moto Blur are absolutely uh, fantastic in my opinion. You know, again, love-hate, they're kind of boxy, they're kind of, you know, devoid of any any sheen or any, you know, beauty that comes with a widget like that you see in HTC Sense user interface. But let's look at something like weather, for example. This is something, and if you've seen my videos, you're like, oh, he's talking about this again. But it's really important to me. You know, you look at the weather widget, and you can see not only is it that size, but it offers you the ability to customize within bounds. You know, obviously some of those uh, won't, go, won't go that far, but you can customize the size of the widgets. That's huge to me because you have a screen like this where there's a bunch of stuff on the page and you want to fit, you know, let's say two widgets right there. Well, on any other user interface, you're not going to be able to do that because the widgets are huge. As you can see, you know, Day's widget, for example, the widgets are huge. You're not going to be able to fit a spare widget in there. Whereas you pull something like this, let's go back to weather again, get the default weather widget, bam, you can sit it in there. So you can move it up here and you have room for additional tiny widgets. So just that customization option is a very nice touch and you can do the same thing with uh, with a bunch of the other Moto Blur widgets as well. See what I'm doing with that. Now the Samsung ones are a little bit more bubbly, a little bit more colorful, kind of goes along with what I was saying about that iOS theme that it's got going for it. And you can see, you know, we go through the widgets here. Uh, Buddy's Now, Days widget, you know, Buddy's Now is kind of your social aggregation widget where you can bring in Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, and, uh, and add from there. Let's go to edit, for example. We'll add in a buddy. Or no, I'm sorry, I, I'm thinking of two, two separate widgets. We can go in here, add a buddy. Let's add Billy Bob, for example. And then you can scroll through a message or call. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the social aggregation. Too many widgets, too many, too many widgets. And then uh, you can see Double Twist, which is pre-installed. Drive Smart, which is also pre-installed, and we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, dual Clock, Facebook Feeds and Updates. And then a couple of uh, a couple of additional widgets on this. Let's take a look at what's installed on both of these devices. You can see a couple T-Mobile branded applications on both of these. You have uh, AirSync, you have uh, All Share, Camera. Well, Camera is pre-installed with Android. Uh, Car Home, Chrome to Phone, I installed. And you can see Double Twist, Drive Smart's a cool program. If you've seen my reviews of the uh, or any video I've done with the Galaxy S. This is pretty cool. You can set DriveSmart to on, and whenever somebody calls you, you can have them uh, auto send a text message to them saying that you're uh, you're driving and you'll call them back. Very cool. There, GoGo -Go in-flight Wi-Fi Inception replaces Avatar on the Vibrant, so you do get you know if you like Leonardo DiCaprio and creepy creepy dreams, Inception is the movie for you. You should just cut off the dogfight and go out and buy this phone right now. That replaces Avatar Layer, of course, pre-installed. Samsung's Media Hub pre-installed. Uh, I'll talk about that shortly. T-Mobile's My Account, My Device, Slacker Radio, and then uh, Quick Video Chat since it does have that front-facing camera. Wi-Fi calling, so if you're in an area where T-Mobile service isn't the best, you can jump on Wi-Fi. It does use your plan minutes, but still better, uh, better to use your plan minutes and have coverage than not at all. Visual voicemail, and then this does have mobile hotspot capabilities, though there's no icon on the home screen. You do have to go into wireless and network and click on mobile AP and once you enable that you can take advantage of it. Now on this one you have advanced task killer which I've pre-installed of course. Moto Blur accounts, AT&T code scanner. Now I have to give them credit you know I have code scanner and family map still pre-installed on here just to show you what it's like but uh, this is not a typical AT&T thing but on the Atrix you can actually remove those applications so I hope that's a step forward with AT&T that they realize you know that not everybody wants YP mobile and AT&T Family Map and My AT&T, etc. You can remove those on the Adrix, so kudos to them. And uh, you know, I hope that that's something in the Android phones going forward. Blockbuster, and you'll notice that with Moto Blur, some of these account or some of these icons are a little bit different looking. Contacts, Dialer. Uh, you look at like 
help center. Um, I didn't mean to click on that. Whoops. We'll go back. Uh, camera, for example, camcorder. The icons look a little bit different as a result of Moto Blur, but you get uh, applications like My AT and T, Need for Speed, Shift, Social Networking, which is actually a blur thing. The Web Top Connector, which actually uh, is an Ubuntu thing which you can use to dock this device. Now it has an exceptional accessory ecosystem to it. Not only uh, is the device available, but you have a, a media dock and a, uh, and a laptop dock. So if you buy the laptop dock, it's 300 if you buy it with the phone. So a total of $500 for the purchase. If you walk out the door and walk back in, the laptop dock alone is $500. So a you know, tough decision to make at time of purchase. But anyway, you put this down, and if you remember our CES video, I showed you this, but you put it down in the back of the laptop, you open it up, and the phone's totally powering the laptop. It's you know a useless accessory without the phone. Power it, you know, pop it down in there, turn it on, and using that web top connector, you can uh, send text messages, browse the web, uh, take care of appointments, look at your, yeah, your contacts list, anything from that laptop as opposed to this tiny screen. So I have to give them credit, you know, in an age where all of these phones really look alike, definitely distinguishes them from the pack. That and, of course, the, uh, the NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor. So let's take a look at the keyboards on both of these devices because there are some differences. We'll go to a new text message on both. Now, the Samsung Galaxy S4G comes with two out of the box. It comes with a Samsung keypad and it comes with swipe. As you can see, we'll double-click, go to input method. Uh, and swipe and Samsung keypad are there. Now it doesn't come with a stock Android keyboard, which Samsung wants decent, but I prefer the stock Android one. Let's go to the quick brown fox is sleepy and ready to go home. Quick brown fox is sleepy. So you can see some errors there, but the quick brown fox is sleepy and ready to go home. That's what it looks like in landscape mode as well. Now you can customize this keyboard and uh, I have predictive text turned on. You can turn that off. But I just don't feel like it offers the same fluidity as a stock Android keyboard uh, like something on the Epic 4G or at least an Android 2.1 or the Nexus S or some of the ones with the stock Android keyboard pre-installed. Don't uh, It's a decent keyboard but it's not my favorite. Now on the other hand the Motorola Atrix 4G's keyboard and this one has swipe as well, but the actual multi-touch keyboard is one of my favorites on the market when the screen is large enough. You see these keys are very narrow and small, or I mean I wouldn't say small, but they're very narrow and tall. Uh, but you know I often found that with a display that's a little smaller like this with a four inch display, it was a little hard to type on at times and also I've experienced some lag with the Motorola Atrix. Uh, so we'll see the Quick Brown Fox jumped over the lazy animal. So you know, I've experienced some lag, like I've had to slow down my typing in order to keep, in order for the device to keep up with me. But you can see, I mean, you know, the four-inch display definitely brings the key, the keyboard size down a little bit. But uh, and I've seen some lag, but still one of my favorite keyboards on the market. That's what it looks like in portrait mode, and then back to landscape mode. But all around, a great keyboard. You know, you may not experience the same lag. You may type a little bit slower, a little bit differently than I do. Uh, let's try. Thanks for the, so you can see, I mean, you know, it doesn't necessarily keep up with me, but, you know, it may be differently, or it may work differently for you.